Um, today, we're going to start a new chapter. Uh, this is chapter 11, Compressibility of Soil. And so these slides are part one of this chapter. Uh, this chapter uh, is perhaps one of the, I would say, very first chapter where we're going to actually deal with the application side of what we learned. So we're going to calculate compressibility and settlement of soil. So we're going to spend quite a few lectures. So I divide this chapter into two components, two parts, one and two. So today we're going to start part one. And if you look at course objective this again, and this is one of the main course objective I highlight here, is to be able to estimate the magnitude and time rate of consolidation. So consolidation is one form of settlement, and I'll uh, talk about that more today. And to start this uh, compressibility or consolidation discussion, so I want to use this example here. Uh, this is one, perhaps one of the most famous example of settlements. So this is a leaning tower of Pisa. And uh, this tower is uh, over 180 feet tall with foundation, nine foot foundation sitting on weak, unstable soil. Okay. So this, the construction of this uh, leaning tower took almost 200 years due to problems associated with settlements and tilting. And if you look at this soil profile, so this is a, a geological soil profile of this leaning tower. And this tower is sitting on mostly fine sands and clay soil. So if you look at this uh, soil profile, most of, uh, most of them are actually fine grain soils, clays and fine sands. And the groundwater table is pretty high. So it's close to the ground surface. So that's actually a design flaw from the very beginning. So the site uh, selection is not ideal for a tower structure like this, leaning, uh, this tower. Um, so a couple of things or a few things we can learn from this uh, leaning tower pizza case. So first of all, if you look at this soil profile here, it's actually highlighted. So this differential settlement is due to the increased compressibility and deformation of soil on the southern end of this tower. So it's on the right hand side on this side. So there's there was increased settlement and uh, compressibility in, uh, on this side. So the tower is leaning. So a few things we can learn from this uh, case study here that relates to what we are going to discuss in this chapter. First, soil will deform if you put load on top. Okay. So in this case, if you construct, say, this tower, uh, tall tower on top, soil is going to deform. And in this case, it's going to deform vertically because you're loading, you're pressing this soil. In second, uh, in actually most the cases, uh, differential settlement is more detrimental. Okay. So I've shown on this slide a few different settlement scenario. On the right hand, on the left side, this is uniform. Okay. And this uniform, as the name suggests, so basically the foundation that soil layer is compressed uniformly. So it's a uniform settlement. And then the, the middle figure and then the right one, those two are basically all differential settlements. One is more tipping, the other one is uh, more, um, so this is more tipping. And this is differential, so you have more uneven settlement. Okay. And so this differential settlement is more detrimental and this is not only to high structure like tower, uh, high rise buildings, but also for lower structure like family houses. So if you have differential settlement, it could induce cracks. And the other point I want to make uh, related to this case is deformation in fine green soil can take very, very long time to, to finish, to complete. So in the Leaning Tower of Pizza, actually, it was con constructed almost 600 years ago, and it's still actually deforming up to this day. So that deformation process can take very, very long time, especially in fine green soil. And in this chapter, we're going to, I'm going to discuss the theory behind this, why it takes so much time for deformation to occur in fine green soil. And so when that tower was constructed, there's no theory of compressibility of soil. So there's no science-based design, but today we know much more about deformation in soil, compressibility in soil. And that's what we're going to learn today uh, in this uh, lecture. Okay, so we're going to discuss this theory of compressibility of soil. Okay. 
All right, so that's a bit of a background uh, motivation on this topic. And so I want to go to this uh, outline. So as I mentioned, this is a pretty significant chapter. I'm going to divide this into two components, two parts. So we're going to spend a few lectures this week on part one. And a key question we're going to answer in part one is highlighted here. Okay. So we're going to, of course, talk about what's consolidation, this consolidation test. But a quick key question we're going to answer in part one is how much settlement would happen if you put the load on top. Okay. So that's basically the magnitude of consolidation. And for part two, we're going to focus on that time rate. I mentioned it, it will take very long time for deformation to happen in fine grain soil. So we're going to talk about how to estimate that. So that's part two. So, we're going to, so that's how I divide this chapter into two parts here. Okay. Um, so let's look into uh, part one here, um, soil settlement and consolidation. Right. Um, so why is it settlement and consolidation? There are, uh, strictly speaking, there are two different things. Okay. So settlement in soil uh, is due to loading is actually uh, made up of three components. Okay. So if I call this total settlement ST, and there are actually three components to that. So if you put a loading on top, there are actually three components. The first one, I'm going to call that SE, and I'm going to explain this SE term. Okay. In the second one, I'm going to use SC. In the third one, I'm going to use SS. Okay. So that is the total settlement in soil due to loading, the three components. And what are the three components here? The first one is that SE term. So SE. So this is uh, what we call elastic settlement or immediate settlement. So that is SE immediate or elastic settlement. And shown here, this is due to the elastic deformation of dry soil or mo and moisture soil without any change in the moisture content. Okay, so that's basically the elastic part of the settlement. And the calculation of this is based on theory of elasticity. So that's the first component. And the second one is at SC, so SC. And this is called primary consolidation or um, yeah, primary consolidation. Okay. And this primary consolidation is basically mainly due to the drainage of water from voids that leads to a volume change and this is particularly true for fine grain soil. So it's primary consolidation. And when we talk about consolidation, almost all the time we are referring to fine grain cohesive soil. Because for coarse grain soil like sand and gravel, this primary consolidation component is actually pretty small compared to the other ones. So uh, it's more of a concern for clays. And the third one, that SS term is called a secondary consolidation. And again, this is more relevant to cohesive soil like clays. Okay. And this last component is caused by plastic deformation or plastic adjustment of cohesive soil fabric under a constant effective stress. Okay. So this is called a creep movement. Okay. So this is the last component. In, in cohesive soil like clays, the last two primary and secondary consolidation are more uh, significant than the first one. Okay. So, and 
it's more significant in terms in terms of both of their magnitude and also in terms of the time period over which they happen. Okay. So that's why in this chapter, we're going to focus on actually consolidation component of clays. Okay. And most of the time for many applications, the primary consolidation is of concern. So it's more significant and we're going to spend the majority of our time on this one. So we're going to focus on primary consolidation of clays. Okay. So that's basically what we're going to discuss in this chapter. And second, the consolidation, um, I have some material prepared for this one, uh, but uh, depends on the time. Uh, but I, I, again, I'll focus more on this primary consolidation. Okay. So these are basically the uh, components of total sediment in soil. And all the discussions from this point on will be focusing on this primary consolidation. Okay. Um, so for this consolidation of clay, uh, Basically, to understand what we're going to do, what we're going to do in this chapter, uh, we're going to learn. I'm going to use this simple example here. So we have this soft clay layer. Okay. 20 feet of soft clay. And just to make things easier, I'm going to put water table at the ground surface, just to illustrate the concept. And we're going to preload this site with sandy fuel on top. And later in this chapter, uh, chapter, I'm going to explain why people need to preload a site. Okay. So that's something you uh, do pretty common to improve the site condition. Okay. So we're going to preload this site and that preloading is going to cause consolidation in the clay layer. Okay. And to calculate how much settlement, how much consolidation uh, would happen given this load. So what we do in the field is actually we're going to take a sample. Okay. To make the sample representative, we typically take it from the middle of the clay layer, okay. just to make it more representative. So I'm going to take this clay sample from the middle of the clay layer. Okay. And this sampling can be done using, say, Shelby tube. So we looked at uh, Shelby tube sampling before. So that's one way you can take sample from the field. So the bottom line, we have some samples from this clay layer and we're going to basically reduce the response of this whole layer to that of that sample. Okay, so we're going to study the settlement, the consolidation of the sample and use that to guide our calculation of this 20 feet of soft clay layer. Okay, so we're going to use this is this whole layer. To a representative sample. So we're going to study the response of this material using this representative sample and we're going to take it to the lab. Okay. And in the lab, I'm going to perform a test. That's actually what you're going to do in the lab this week. So I'm going to put a load, let's call this load P. Okay. And we're going to study its deformation in response to the applied load. Okay. So we're going to look at for a given load P, how much sediment would, would occur in the soil sample and from that, we can calculate various quantities. Okay, so you can calculate the uh, volumetric stream or excuse me, vertical stream or void ratio as this is delta H over H naught. Let's use delta E here. So you can calculate the void ratio change given uh, this loading here. So once you have that, okay, and then you can use what you learned from the lab test. So that's basically the stress strain relationship. Okay. And this stress strain is presented in various form and we're going to discuss that today. But you're going to get this stress strain relationship and other basically parameters, modulus indices you need 
for settlement calculation. So then you're going to get that information to calculate settlement in the field. Okay. So this includes stress strain relationship in various modulus and indices. Modular and indices. Okay. And this is called 1D consolidation test. So basically, this 1D consolidation test simulate the uh, load deformation or stress strain response of the material in the field. And also, it provides various moduli indices that you need for sediment calculation in the field. So that's the whole process. And so next, I'm going to focus on this 1D consolidation test a little bit. And again, this is something you're going to do in the lab this week. So for this 1D consolidation test, um, just one sec. Okay, uh, so for this 1D consolidation test, so let's look at this test. 